Hey y'all, so this week I wanted to walk you through how I come up with my weekly projections and I wanna walk you through it from start to finish. So the first thing I do is come in here and remove all drawings that I had from the last week. As you can see, I'm on the five minute right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out to the weekly chart. I'm gonna reset the chart view so it looks clean and I'm gonna go ahead and chart. The first thing obviously that I see is this low here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as sell side liquidity. And then obviously we have these highs up here. I'm going to mark those as buy side liquidity. BSL. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my news in so I can see which days we should expect a violent reaction. So as you can see, Tuesday, Monday, we don't have any news. Tuesday, we have CPI um, at 8.30, which is going to affect the market more than you can think. Uh, Wednesday, we have core CPI, core retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing, PPI, and retail sales. So Wednesday is going to be a volatile day as well. Uh, Thursday, we don't have any red folder news, just orange folder. Um, and then Friday, we do have preliminary UOM consumer sentiment. So we're going to go in and, and really chart this thing and see where price could go. With all this news, it's going to be a volatile week. So we could take out buy side, we could take out sell side. Who knows? Let's go ahead into the chart and see what we can find. On the weekly, the first thing they ought, that I automatically notice um, is this low here as well. So if we run this 37.88 low, I could see us running 37.35. Um, and ultimately, I think all of this could get taken out, but I don't know if it'll happen this week. So we just have to wait and see. This is all I really see from the weekly. There are no gaps here to chart. Uh, let's go through the daily and see what we can find. So on the daily, you can see this is stretched out a little bit more. Uh, there are lots of gaps. So there's a gap here that we formed on Friday, and this is a bearish fair value gap. There is another gap that we couldn't even hit the CE of, and CE is consequent encroachment, which means 50% of the gap uh, from a couple days ago. And lots of gaps here. Oops, not text. There's a gap here. Lots of gaps. There's lots of liquidity that price could run to. We did fill one and then die. Um, but there's also this whole, what I see immediately to my for my attention is this whole set of consolidation. I think this is getting taken out this week, personally. Um, I don't see, I'm just gonna actually make this yellow. I don't see why we wouldn't take out this. So if you know what a market maker sell model is, um, basically price sets a consolidation, it runs up, takes out a high, and then comes back down and takes that consolidation out. I do think this consolidation is gonna get taken out this week. Um, it's just a matter of, do we wanna go up into here and maybe hit the CE of this? So we would be looking at, and CE, like I said earlier, is the consequent encroachment, 50% of the gap. So 50% of this gap would be around 39.56.75. Do we run up to 39.56.75 and then come back down and take out these lows? It's possible. Um, if the run-up is going to happen, it's going to be tomorrow or starting at 6 p.m. Uh, tonight, which is Sunday, and it is right now 5.47, so the market opens in 13 minutes. I don't know if we're going to gap up or gap down. With all of the Silicon Valley Bank news, I we could gap down. We could gap down and then continue to sell down, probably, maybe. Uh, but also, you have to be wary of all the liquidity above. We've just done too much selling to not retrace and get some of this. And if we draw fibs, we could look and see even just from the swing high from March 6th, if we come down here and we draw fibs, even equilibrium is in this daily for value gap. So I feel like we're probably going to trade back up into that and then sell off. But honestly, the news will outweigh this. If the news is super terrible, super bearish, we're probably going to just keep dying. Um, and, and that's not impossible at this point in the market. Uh, there is a lot of downsides still left. Our, you know, our all-time low from last year is 3530. Uh, we could take that out and end up at you know, 3200, 3300. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen this week. I'm not writing anything off because there is a news catalyst. So we'll have to wait and see. But... My first thought when looking at price this week is that we will retrace at some point back into this daily gap, hopefully, and try to get some sort of premium before continuing to sell off. Because a lot of people heard about this news on Friday and went net short. So they're net short and the market wants to steal their money. We're going to trade back up and then trade down. We could gap down and then trade up. I don't know. We'll find out in about 11 minutes. But that's what I see so far this week. 
um, looking at the daily and the weekly, I do think that this consolidation will get taken out at some point this week. I don't know if it'll come on the latter half of the week or the first half. If it does happen on the first half of the week, we we'll probably will trade up into the end of the week and call it a bit of a relief rally. You might see CNBC say, you know, stocks relief into whatever, some sort of relief rally, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But for now, I don't see us taking out this low first without any sort of retracement. I just don't know. Anything could happen. As far as a bias goes, I don't really have one this week. I do think we'll trade down, but I'm going to wait and see what the market gives me. Um, and hopefully this was helpful. This is how I review the week. This is how I look at what could happen and what might happen. And if this was helpful, let me know. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, um, and good luck this week. And I'll see you guys later.